Rick Bartow's heritage is Wiat, of the Humboldt Bay region in Northern California. Bartow, as everyone calls him, is a highly acclaimed artist. His works have been presented throughout the Pacific Northwest, at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian, and as far abroad as Germany, Japan, and New Zealand. Bartow met with the High Desert Museum's curatorial team to begin the Art Through Ancestry project in 2008. He spent some time with the Bounds Collection, discovering links between the artifacts, his own life story, and various cultural traditions. This visit was a remarkable experience for all involved. So along the Northern California, sort of the Talawa, Karuk, uh, Hoopa, uh, uh, Yurok, Wiat, many similar appearing things, but they spoke entirely different languages. So, say, Iyekwe, Ayuki, Hebwala, be Yurok and Wiat, say hello to the elders because we see evidence of them here. And so, they're still alive, very much alive. And they're still moving, still moving. And this is a lot, the shape of, of, uh, of the fans that, that I make for our elder, Walter Klamath up there in Salettes. Here's the, the elbow joint there. It just makes a natural handle. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful thing. And we, you know, a little bit of ermine on there. With a, wing fans I, I make for the elder uh, this kind of a thumb seems to want to go under also just like this old piece we're told by the doctor and man they should be taken out every now and then let them fly uh, move them in the air so that the spirit gets revivified something that I'll offer here as, as a suggestion maybe that they be taken out to where they can fly uh, that was what I was told, that these are very strong spirits. You, you feel things, sense things, and they've been used in ceremony. They've been used not as a, not as a cooler, but, you know, a lot of times sunshade, sometimes to pray behind. These are really strong, and particularly white one, I don't know. I, I kind of think in Grandma here. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that it's otter wrap. There's a lot of times that braids, both men and women, are wrapped with otter. But along the coast, you know, southern Oregon, well, Salette's on down. You know, people wrap up that way. Um, and these are the these are old, probably early, early trade goods. The the, the commercially dyed rooster hackle uh, traders found when they came in. Uh, you know, real early on when they started the trade market that a, a feather duster was an incredible trade item because it introduced color into the goods. But I know a lot of the, uh, the white fans for medicine, very, uh, very unique um, in, in that they're, they were used for, for heavy duty jobs, you know, it was was, uh, the white was, was doctoring, was a medicine. I mean, they're all good, but the white was particularly awesome. That's a wonderful thing. Some things are decorative, and this is not decorative. These feathers have been, have been used. They're all frayed out. And when Grandma, some, some situation to fan a person down, and that brushing to remove things and it would give a feathered edge over time but it would take a lot of time to get them that way and I don't know just the size and stuff it just I don't know the, the feminine something there and this one probably just the opposite because of the the beak in there but you see along the coast we're talking about these 
along the coast, the women, the women were, were the ones that set the the pace. They were, uh, and according to the books and things, you know, the the women were. They didn't really have chiefs along the coast, so the women were, were kind of said what to do and stuff. Get around these old things and make me cry. Because you can really feel it. You can really see it. Where we were and where we are. Where we can go. If we can straighten things out. Father, Grandmother, Great Creator, Holy Spirit, come before in a humble way to say thank you. Thank you from the doorway in to the doorway back out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ebola, Ebola, Ebola. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Bartos' association with animals native mythology, and expressionism make for powerful creations. We headed to Newport, Oregon this spring to see what he was working on for the Art Through Ancestry project and to hear his blues band, Rick Bartow and Black Dog. Dora Swayze Bounds was the, was, you know, and, and I was reading. Blue was for prosperity and respectability. It was a man's color plus green, and blue and red represented the men at war and the female, a lot of orange, yellow, and white, which was traditional. Um, and then, you know, they were given names, and I noticed some pictures of guys, and then uh, uh, more pictures of guys, and there was this wonderful story about her son, um, her son being in Vietnam and, and having a connection with a doctor and man, well, a medicine man, we call him doctor and man. Or doctor and woman, um, and so uh, um, I was thinking about that kind of spooky stuff that you know um, I know about that stuff a little bit. And Bartow incorporates his own personal struggles, environmental concerns, and his time in Vietnam as an army teletype operator and musician into many aspects of his art. He says about his work, I believe in the power of drawing as medicine. I paint your portrait and do it well With a brush made out of a coyote tail Find the likeness that I seek I draw in your feathers with the raven's beak Play along with some old time tune Pray all night with the grandma moon Pray all night with the grandma moon Out of your life and into the air Take it like a hawk fly 
会还要有。do that? I make all these drawings and all they want to know about is how do I make that? <laughs> and I won't tell them. Voila! Let's call it quits. <laughs>